Genesis 37, verse 1. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brother. And the lad with the sons of Bilna and Zelpha, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear the dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding the sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheep stood all around and bowed to my sheep. The brother said to him, Shall we do indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed still another dream, he told it to his brothers, and said, Look, I have dreamed. Another dream. This time the sun, the moon, and eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream you've dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in mind. Last week we talked about the need to enlarge our borders, to extend our tents. Our points last week that I hope you remember, number one was the same thing. That means enlarge the place of your tent so that you have room enough in it for the new dimensions of what God wants to do in you and through you, and in us as a church, and through us as a church. Think big. Remember, everything that you say and do begins with your thoughts. Secondly, he said, get some more rope. In other words, lift in your cords, he said in Isaiah, so that you are prepared for growth. Nobody has growth and can contain growth if they're not prepared for it. When you have a child, you begin to expand the household because you're expanding for the purpose of growth. In other words, do something to prepare by faith for what God wants to do in your life. It's a move of faith. And thirdly, we talked about driving the stakes of the tent or our dwelling deep. Driving deep the stake of faith. Driving deep the state of prayer, that we intensify our prayer life, that we take it to another level, deeper and higher. That we intensify our understanding and we press into the word of God and seize and take hold of the promises of God, driving our trust in God's word deeper. And finally, the fourth state was simply obedience. That we would be obedient to be led by the Spirit of God to do whatever it was that God had called us to do. And our prayer was simply this, Lord, enlarge my impact. Enlarge my impact through a surrendered life. But now when you begin to think big, what I'm talking about are God-sized dreams. See, faith dreams God-sized dreams. Dreams that we can fulfill in ourselves, things that we can kind of manipulate and, and pull a few folks together and get some stuff done. Those, those are dreams, but those aren't God dreams. Because God dreams contain God-sized miracles needed to make them happen. Amen. And in our text today,
today, we learn about a master of dreams in the person of Joseph. As a matter of fact, in the first 10 verses of this chapter, the word dream is mentioned 10 times. In 10 verses, the word dream or dream is mentioned 10 times. And so I want to talk about dreams because we dream by faith. We think big by faith. Dreams are God's vision for you and your life. Dreams are God's design for our lives. Many of us don't know where we're going or where we're at because we haven't been interpreted by God. God interprets our lives. We don't make ourselves. We're not self-made men and women. We are God-made men and women who are part of the church. And they are his purpose for your life. And they are his plans for for your life. And we stay healthy by dreaming. You know, you get old when you stop dreaming. And then you go, well, let me just bear my time and, and stay here till Jesus comes back. And if I can just keep my head above water and keep these children out of drugs and from getting pregnant. And what? <laughs> now that's the limit of many folks' dreams. I'm dreaming for every one of my grandchildren to hit college and to hit it running and do great things in their lives. And so sometimes we, we think so very small and to stay healthy spiritually, you gotta have dreams. That's how we grow. We grow through our dreams. We grow as we dream. And Joseph had dreams. Man, did Joseph have dreams. But along the way, Joseph struggles and the challenges he faced shows us that dreams just don't happen. See, it doesn't cost anything to dream. You can sit there and dream all day, and that's a wonderful thing, but dreams just don't happen. They used to say, before I got saved, if dreams came true, fools would be driving Cadillacs up and down the pool. <laughs> dreams just don't happen. The truth is, now listen to me carefully this morning, that sometimes reality gets worse before it lines up with the dream. Come on, somebody. <laughs> well, it, it just don't happen. Sometimes it looks like it's going backwards because you decided to dream. As a matter of fact, sometimes we have to live through nightmares before we realize our dream. You gotta go through some hard times, through some difficulties, through some situations and circumstances. And in this life, count on this, there will be trouble. Touch somebody and say, you got on that. <laughs> and Joseph, man, he experienced enough discouragements and setbacks to last most folk a lifetime. And to tell the truth about it, so have many that are sitting here today. You've had enough discouraging things, enough stuff happened that last year. You don't need another bad thing to happen. But it's important to know that dreams take time. They take time. Don't, don't get discouraged when it doesn't happen at the snap of a finger. Don't get discouraged when your dream don't come true tomorrow. Don't come, uh, get discouraged when you're thinking big and things get tough. It took Joseph, listen to me, over 13 years to realize his dream. Dreams don't happen overnight. Dreams are not sprints. Dreams are marathons. That means we'll be running for our dreams until they all are fulfilled for a very long time. Because God unfolds them one step at a time. Ecclesiastes tells us to everything there's a time and to everything there is a season. There's a season to cry, there's a season to laugh, there's a season to gather in, there's a season to scatter. There's a season to rejoice, and there's a season to mourn. To everything, and, and the Bible then goes on to say, and God makes everything beautiful Amen. in its own time. Right. But see, what keeps us dreaming, the writer goes on to say, God has hidden eternity in our hearts. In the heart of every man and every woman, eternity sits there, hidden. And it drives us. That's, that's why we feel sometimes we don't belong here. 
Uh, we, we don't fit in. Uh, uh, there's got to be something more than this. this. This is what drives us towards God. And unless we use things like cars and houses and, and, and some people use drugs and alcohol and all kinds of things to, to dull that sense, our hunger for God brings us to the feet of the cross. Right. And we find new life and we begin to find fulfillment of that in the presence of God. Dreams, your dreams, are going to face tests. Tell somebody, you will be tested. Listen, you thought haters was a new word, didn't you? <laughs> haters is all the way back in Genesis. Joseph had some haters, man. <laughs> and they were in his own family. You know, it's one thing to go out in the world and get hated on. It's another thing to come home and get hated on. Joseph's brothers hated him, then their, their, their hatred grew greater and greater. It didn't diminish, it increased. So he was hated by his brothers. He was hated so much that they stuck him in a pit. Your haters would love to get you in a hole. So that you can't move forward and you can't move backwards. You can't move to the left, you can't move to the right. And on top of that, that, that they stole Joseph's pride and joy. They stole his coat. Right. They took his best stuff. They took the thing that he, he, he really relished in. That, 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 that was such a gift from the father. They, they came and they stole his coat. And then they hated him so much, he was sold out by his own brother. Brother sold him in slavery. Just sold him out. Just decided to, to send him his way. Well, the story continues. Joseph was lying. Potiphar's wife just, just lied. No fault of his own. He just, just lied. And, and the sad thing was is that the people believed the lie. Not only was he lying on, it went further. Listen, these are all setbacks, but remember, tell somebody Joseph had a dream. He was put in prison on a lie. Now, I, I've been to a prison ministry for 40 years. Everybody is. <laughs> they lied on me, brother.
See, God is just as interested in who you are becoming while you dream as he is by the fulfillment. He wants to fulfill your dream, but he's more interested on who you're becoming while you dream. Tell somebody, grow. See, we're growing. We're, we're growing through our dreaming. We're, we're thinking big. God is stretching us. But he's concerned about the integrity of his word and the character of his people. And so he's just as interested in who you are becoming. Because he could snap his finger and give you the dream just like that. Giving you things is no big deal. It's us that God wrestles with. Talk to Jacob about it. He wrestles with us. He wrestles with people. He could took Moses and folk and send him right on into the promised land. Would have been no thing. But, but the people's character was suspect. Huh? People get stuff. God won't get the glory. They have a tendency to steal it. So hard times. Anybody got some hard times? Anybody at all? Hard times remind us that God's dreams are bigger than us. And we need God to bring them past. Otherwise, you can fool yourself and start making things happen yourself and doing things in your own way and in your own manner. But hard times remind us that God's dreams are bigger than us and we cannot experience what God has for us apart from God. You can't take the things, the gift, and forget about the gift. We need Him. And because we need Him, given us this wonderful gift while we're dreaming. It's the most powerful gift that he's ever given anyone. He gives us the gift of prayer. Because prayer gives us access to God. It gives us access to the power we need, the strength we need, the wisdom we need, the wherewithal we need, the love we need, the grace we need, the mercy we need, whatever it is that we need, prayer gives us access. It's the vehicle that takes us into God's presence. Prayer. It's a gift. We ought to relish it. We ought to cherish it. We ought to use it often. It ought to become a deeper and deeper part of our lives because it gives us access to everything that we need. Because dreams thrive in tough places and hard times. That's where they thrive. That's where they grow. If you've been anywhere in California, down in the Central Valley, you know, it's wonderful to go to the mountaintops and the curvaceous hills of California. <laughs> but you can't get fit. You got to go down to that San Joaquin Valley. My mama used to pack us up in the back of my auntie's car and take us down there. We would pick boxes oh, of peaches. Oh, no. Woo, we'd be itching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we'd get some plums. Good God. We just picking peaches. I don't know, is that just slavery day? <laughs> We're picking peaches. And then you got to come home. And she got fearful pots on the stove boiling the peaches. We all itching from the peach buds. Then she go buy this box of mason jars. She'd make peach preserves. Plum preserves. Watermelon rind. You all know them like that. Watermelon <laughs> rind preserves. We store them in the basement, but we always had to drive down to the valley. We never went up on no mountain to do no picking. And dreams thrive in the valley. They thrive in hard places. That's why we walk 
know how to make adjustments and changes in your life at a moment's notice. You got to learn to go with the flow. I like to call it Holy Ghost fluid. You got to be fluid, man. You, you got to go with the bumps and the scrapes. One day everything's going fine. The next way you knock back way over here. But, but you're going with God's flow. You're transitioning. You, you're not so fixed this way that as soon as a disappointment comes, you give up. I was listening to the commentators talk about why the Denver Broncos lost the Super Bowl. Huh? First play of the game. Peyton takes a snap. Rolls to the back of the end zone. Two points. Come on. He never could get back because they said, one of the problems with Peyton Manning, and he is good, is he's a perfectionist. He, he can't take it when things go wrong. Then from then on, man, what game? What game? <laughs> <laughs> he should call it like that, man. <laughs> All that money wasted on potato chips and dip. <laughs> we could have a fellowship here at the church. You know what I mean? And some saints are like that. They leave church charged up. Man, I got a verse. God told me this. And they get up from prayer, charged up. And then they get a setback. Just think, when Joseph found himself in the pit, what dream? I give up. Joseph couldn't go home and live in peace. He said they couldn't even speak peaceably to him. He couldn't get a kind word in the house. He said, what's the use of this? I hate this. He got sold into slavery. He's traveling down. You know what's interesting? This is just a side. Let me get to this. God will take your mistakes and turn them into. Abraham had no business going into hell because God gave a promise to Sarah. But Abraham went into Hagar trying to fix what God had done and trying to hurry up God's plan. And Ishmael was born. Mistake. Terrible mistake. But years later, here come the Israelites, headed down to Egypt and they carried Joseph from Canaan down to Egypt, right to the place that God could use. God would use the Israelites a mistake later on in your life and bless you with it. And it provided transportation for Joseph to Egypt. Joseph is in the pit. But Joseph is transitioning. He, he goes with the flow. He, he, he flows in the potter's house and starts running things. He goes to the prison and he says, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't like it. This is terrible, but he goes with the flow. And God's dreams don't die because I'm a kid. God's dreams don't die because I'm in potter's house and serve. God's dreams don't die because I had to do some time. It was the time he did, they got him in the barrel of crisis. And if he never was hated by his brother, he never would have went in the pit. If he never went in the pit, he never would have been sold into slavery. If he never been sold into slavery, he never went to Potiphar's house. If Potiphar's wife had never lied on him, he never would have ended up in prison. If he never went to prison, he never would have met the butler. If he never would have met the butler, two years later, the butler couldn't introduce him to Pharaoh. And if he never met Pharaoh, he'd have never been able to save the entire heritage of God. <laughs> Dreamers are transitional people. Tell somebody to go with the flow. You know, don't let this stuff knock you out. That's why palm trees don't blow away. You know, when the wind comes, they bend all the way down. And when the storm's over, they stand right back up. All the other trees, branches flying all over the place with the palm. Roots, they go deep. Dreamers are transitional people. They, 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 they can flow. Another thing we need to know about 
dreams is that dreams transcend you. God's dreams are bigger than you. If the dream you got ain't bigger than you, it ain't from God. It's from you. God's dreams are bigger than you, and as a matter of fact, listen to this point very carefully, you don't have God's dreams. God's dreams have you. And until we recognize that, we go, we have a dream. No, no, God's dream has me, and that's what can cause me to conduct myself the way that I conduct myself. That caused me to do what I do because I am possessed by God's vision, his purpose, his will for my life. And so I must, my destiny is this dream that is in the mind and the heart of God to be carried out. I read a quote the other day that says we are as old as God. Well, what do you mean we're as old as God? Well, if we were in the mind of God, and if God ever had a first thought, since God always was and always is and always will be, we were already in the mind of God. God was thinking. God's always thinking. And so we, we have always been in his mind. You, you didn't come up with a last-minute idea. You are not a fool's. You are not an accident. Amen. You are not here by chance. Hallelujah. You're not here by random selection. You are not here by primary ooze or a big bang. You didn't bow. You were always in the mind. That gives me great comfort. That gives me great comfort. Know that I'm on his mind. The Bible says you are the apple of his eye. And that literally means you are the pupil of his eye. He sees you. You are the very essence. Lives in the mind. God's been thinking about you for a long time. And now, here you are. You beat out several million sperm. <laughs> you was a winner when you were born. You broke out of the race. Y'all gave God some nightmares, don't raise your hands. <laughs> God had a plan for your life, and here you are all off deep in sin. Huh? But God never gave up on you, did he? Before the foundation of the world, Christ died for us. So we can come back. Or the dream, if you wish, of God. And be conformed that he might be the firstborn of many brethren and, and sisters. So you don't have God's dreams. You gotta let the purpose, the dream of God have you. And I want you to understand God's dreams are not just about you. <laughs> Wake up and smell the coffee. 
They're not about cars and houses and jobs and bling. But the dream that you are involves helping and blessing other folks. God's dream is to use you and to make you a blessing so that he can bless others of his. He not only wants to bless you, but he wants to make you a blessing. Look at somebody say, you're a blessing. <laughs> so it's not about us. And we get so caught up. You know, what's that song? You so vain, I bet you think this song is about you. Is about you. <laughs> huh? That's why I took my tooth out today, you know. <laughs> I'm trying not to grin. But I'd be vain to think that y'all came to look at me. And if you did, shame on you. You know? We're so vain that, that sometimes we think everybody in the church is talking about you. Don't know about it. I ain't going because they always talk. Nobody's talking about you. <laughs> I got to run in my stock and I can't make it to church. <laughs> Nobody looking at your leg. I broke that church. <laughs> I broke a nail. I can't make it to the house of God. <laughs> Car is dirty. We can't go to church. How do we get this idea that it was about us? The sun comes up because of us. And the sun sets because of me. Well, I, I know my teenage daughters used to think that. When they were teenagers. They, they, they thought the world revolved around them. Everything had to be right to them. Uh, Could have drove me crazy. But I told my kids, if anybody's going to drive, making you a blessing to others. Another thing about dreams, dreams call for a spirit of servanthood. See, Joseph helped others attain their dreams while waiting on his dreams to come to pass. Here he is in prison, but he's helping the Bible. Here he is, a prisoner, but he's going to help Pharaoh and ultimately a whole nation about. Look at somebody say, it's not about you. There's a spirit of servanthood where we serve others. And while we are dreaming, that don't mean we sit back and dream and others serve us. But while we're dreaming, I get to serve other folks. I get to serve you. I get to serve anyone that God brings in my way. I have this privilege of serving others while God is making me what he wants to make me and doing through me what he wants to do through me. It's not about me. It's about him using me to serve other folks to serve a cause that is bigger than me. See, that's why dreams require faith and trust. There's a requirement of dreams must have See, let me see if I can get We learn from Joseph the difference between your coat and your dream. There's a difference, but if you can't distinguish that difference. See, your coat is a temporary symbol that gives you a good feeling. Right? Joseph's father gave him this. Beautiful coat. It was so beautiful that his brothers hated it. It was something. But you know what? You can lose your coat. Your coat can get stolen from you and ripped off while you're dreaming. You can lose stuff, you can lose things, you can lose titles, you can lose position, you can lose status, you can lose your reputation, all kinds of stuff. These all represent your coach. But your dreams are permanent. And they require cultivation for fulfillment. And if you remember correctly, Joseph lost two coats. 
while he was reading. He had a coat. Now, if you're wrapped up in your house, or wrapped up in your car, wrapped up in your position, and then you got laid off, your dream is dead. You lost your house, the dream is dead. Your car got wrecked, the dream is dead. Your clothes, your house had a fire, your, your, your fine threads burnt up. Your dream is dead. You had a sweetheart, and they left. Dream is dead. That's not your dream. That's just your coat. See, the first coat that Joseph lost, his brothers ripped him off. And I'm sure he was disappointed. Now, disappointment will take your coat from you. It will try to crush your dream. He, he was disappointed, man. His heart broke my own brothers. Owned me to slavery and took my coat. I don't even have my coat no more. There was no visible or tangible thing he could hold on to for his dream. Come on. Joseph lost the second coat. Part of his wife like that. And it was found in Potiphar's wife. Snatched it and he left. Uh, now listen to this. Uh, he left his coat rather than compromise. Uh, Some stuff you gotta let go. Holding on to it is gonna destroy you. Clutching to it is gonna destroy you. Thinking that that is what defines. That is what shows everybody who you are. That is the extension of you. It's not. It's not. But people will compromise their dream. I mean, how powerful is going to be? He ain't old. She like me. <laughs> I'm at the house every day. Compromise. When we compromise with sin, one of my members called me this week and said, Pastor, I got to pay my mom. I said, oh, what? And she said, boom, 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 boom. And they went through their taxes, and their taxes, the lady said, well, I got somebody who could pose as uh, such and such so that you won't get taxed as much. And she said she thought about it for a minute. And then she said, no, that's all right. Several, well, thousands of dollars at one time. So they kept doing the taxes, and the lady kept saying, Come on, man. She looked at me and said, Well, you know, it says here that the federal government put a couple of tens of thousands of dollars in your bank account from back. He said, if I had them at another lake, I would know. He said, check your bank account. And she checked her bank account. She said, Pastor, they had put several tens of thousands of dollars in her. I was able to take care of the tax burden and have money left. <laughs> but she wanted to tip her. You may be tempted to compromise your dream. <coughs> then how can you say God did it? <coughs> you cheated to get it, and you say God did it. <coughs> if you cheated to get it, just say you got it. Don't bring God up in the cheat. <laughs> Trying to put him in all up in this, this stuff. Joseph was tempted to compromise his dream, and as a result of not compromising his dream, he lost his but losing your coat does not mean losing your dream. They are not synonymous. God's dreams are bigger than coats and the things that we find to symbolize the dream of God. That's why I'm careful in this preaching that, oh, you serve God, you have a big long coat. You serve God, you have a house on the hill. That's going to 
symbolize God loves you and blesses you. You mean tell me if I don't have a long car and a house on the hill, God don't love me? Jesus didn't die for me? He liked you better than he likes me? Come on, guys. We, we, we got to stop this foolishness that is really entertainment on television and not God's way. Come on. Come on. Just, and, and you don't need me to tell you that. Just use your own heart the way you know Jesus. You having a big car and a big house doesn't symbolize that God loves you and blessing you. Well, God did bless you. Thank God. But, but listen, God's dreams have me. I, I, I don't have God's dreams. And so we begin to understand. We begin to see that God's dreams are bigger than things. Remember, God is just as interested in who the dream is making you as he is in the dream. I'm going to tell somebody to keep on dreaming. Keep on dreaming. <laughs> so we need dreams to stay healthy. Dreams are God's purpose and God's plan for our lives. You know how long Joseph lives in dream after 13 years of waiting? 80 years. He lived his dream for 80 years after he went through everything. 80 years of enjoying where God bought him, but he had to go through to have somebody little show, show. <laughs> So when we got to trust God to provide what we need while we're dreaming, we got to trust God. You, you ain't got to scramble and try to make it up along the way for yourself. You got to trust God to make a way that is open doors while you're dreaming. He's the only one that can open them doors. You ain't big enough. And we got to trust God for the vision to make the dreams happen. The strength and the wisdom that I need to bring about this dream has to come from him. The strength, he's the source. Remember the gift of prayer? It gives us access. So let me go back over this. A couple of things. Number one, you don't have God's dreams. They have you. You possessed by it? That means you've surrendered to the will of God. See, the vision that God had for Jesus, he prayed in the garden and says, Oh, it was possible. Let this cup pass from me. But, but it's not about me. Not my will. Not my dream. But your will be done. What you see in me and through me. Guess who he saw in him and through him? Look at somebody. He's talking about you. He's talking about you. He saw you. He saw you. He saw you. He saw you. He saw, he saw you. Not my dream. Not my will. But your will be done. Secondly, there's a high cost to pay for dreams. It costs. It's going to cost. It's going to cost. How many want the anointing? Woo! Come on, wave your hand. Everybody want the anointing? Want to be anointed? You know how much the anointing costs? You want to know? Ask the hour. Ask the olive how much the anointing costs. See, here's the order. Do this look like a can of olives to you? The pit is gone. That olive had to be crushed and then crushed again. It had to be grinded, it had to be squeezed. That olive had to be turned into what did it cost the olive? It cost it being an olive. When God got through it, it wasn't an olive no more. It was oil. The anointing costs. Dreams are very expensive. God's dreams are very expensive. That's why they're given to those and manifested to those who have a surrendered life. Well, of I surrender all. I surrender all, all to be my blessed Savior. I surrender all. What? All? 
What does it cost? It costs everything. He would gain his life or lose it. He would lose his life for the sake of I'm adding in here. My dream. My will, my vision. Shall gain. Thirdly, there'll always be something big or small to throw you off your dream. Always. Doesn't go happen. Why do machine gonna blow up? Car gonna break down. Something's gonna happen. Somebody gonna say something? You'll feel bad. You'll get sick one day. You know. When they got through with me the other day in the dentist chair, wasn't the dentist, the surgeon. Yeah, I woke up and I was on the couch. Man. Time I got home, I was so bad. I, I stayed in bed for two days. My first thought was, how did you even bother to tell them people that God told you? <laughs> See, man, not look at you. You're toothless and ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> you're in pain. You're laying up here. You're missing two events I was supposed to be at yesterday. And all this. And in me, I, I really feel bad because I'm the one, you know, in our family who takes care of everything. Everything. So I'm a, whenever I get sick, I apologize. I start apologizing to my wife. She knows. She knows. I said, baby, I'm sorry I can't do this. I'm sorry I can't do this. And it was Valentine's Day Friday. I never missed. Valentine in 42 years of marriage. Never once. I couldn't go get her no flowers. I couldn't get her no, no balloons. I you know, usually she wakes up, come downstairs, big old cards, balloons, and all that kind of stuff. I'm looking on Facebook. You know, everybody got balloons and cards. She got nothing. You know, I feel like I failed. You know, uh, uh, we're going to build a church. You can't even get no Valentine for your wife. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. What are you sorry for? I'm sorry I can't be the, you know, really it's kind of a pity party. <laughs> you know what? I just went on, dragged myself into the prayer room, got my Bible, wrote down, and read the things that God had promised, and said, it don't make no difference whether I feel good or whether I don't feel good. It ain't about how I feel. It's about what she's promised. And God is going to hold on. You sometimes you got to pray through. You can't let them things throw you off course of your dream. Remember, dreams thrive in hard places. And dreams call for a spirit of service. God is going to use you regardless of how you're feeling. And that dreamers must be transitional people. You've got to make those transitions. We all have to make it through life, don't we? First, we didn't have no kids, right? Then you have a house full of kids. <laughs> then they cost you a little bit. Then they cost you more. Then they cost you a whole lot. Then they go away to college and cost you a grip. <laughs> I bought my daughter five cars. Hello. Started out trying to hoopty it up, you know what I mean? Them hoopties kept breaking down. I'm 3,000 miles away. I can't do anything. So finally I go down there and I buy a brand New car. <laughs> and she wrecked it. <laughs> Toy. I finished paying off that car. She helped me get another car. But they cost. They cost you. Transition. Uh, don't worry. Thank God this didn't happen when I was broke. <laughs> We've been sending bus passes. <laughs> First you got a house full of kids that cost you a lot. Then all of a sudden, nobody calls. Transition. Transition. Now, I mean, they didn't got to get used to each other again without four people in the middle of it. And then they go. And they was gone for a while. We've had peace. Eight grandkids. <laughs> Running their fingers on the wall like this. Carpet <laughs> nasty. I don't like them. That's the car. Tracking stuff in, eating, you know, half beautiful apples and fruit that you 
got for yourself? This is gonna be gone. <laughs> Can I have? You don't want to say no. You want to say no. <laughs> Eating all the cereal. Ain't no milk. You know. <laughs> now, I want some cereal. <laughs> Ain't no milk. <laughs> Transitions. Transitions. That's all. Just transit. So you're so okay. Oh well, I guess that little honeymoon was over. <laughs> Back to a noisy house again whenever they come over. You know, transition. Transition. Go, flow. That doesn't change God's vision for you. You bust your chin. You made a mistake. You, you fell. You, you, you backed up. You, you went the wrong direction. That don't mean the dream is dead. Come on back. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Go with the flow. Learn to be fluid. Move towards what God has for you. But the most important thing I want to say to you today as we close, and this is the most important lesson I learned from Joseph's dream, is that we never dream alone. Four times, Genesis 39, verse 2, verse 4, verse 21, verse 23, it says these words, and the Lord was with Joseph. Don't you love that man? In the pit, the Lord was with Joseph. In the prison, the Lord was with Joseph. In Potiphar's house, the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. God sent the Holy Spirit to abide with us. He's our dream helper. He is in our lives, bringing about God's vision and dream for our lives. Jesus said, I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, and he shall abide with you forever. You got a dream help. You're never alone in your dreams. I know you may feel like it sometimes. You feel like I'm the only one. Nobody else understands me. Please. God wants to you saying the first time. The Holy Spirit is our dream helper, and he came to abide. Jesus said, He's on the inside. And he's the voice of God to your heart. Amen. Dreams do come true. Pharaoh put Joseph over all of Egypt. That's why we can never give up. Dreams make reality worth all the hard times we face. Because you go face some hard times, but your dreams make the reality worth all the hard times we face. So keep on dreaming God-sized dreams. He'll bring you the path. And the key, Jesus said it in Mark, have faith in God. He didn't say have faith that you don't get this and that. He says in Mark 11, keep your faith where it's supposed to be. Not in house, man, this, that, church, ministry, anything. Keep your faith focused in God. Have faith in God. Yes. Coats come and go. Yes. Ministries come and go. Yes. Things come and go. Yes. But God, the dream giver, yes. has a dream for your life. He has a will and a purpose for your life. And that, my friend, is eternal. Have Well, tell somebody, dream God-sized dreams. Dream God-sized dreams. God-sized dreams. God-sized dreams. God-sized dreams. God-sized dreams. Them is big dreams because they span your entire life. From the time you take your first breath until you take your last breath, that's God's dream for you. And then he carries on into eternity to finish out whatever he has for us. That's why we ought to have God-sized dreams. Not dream for a minute. You know, your new car will last you, what, three years and then it's out of sight. You got print drives sitting in the cushion. <laughs> you ain't washing it every week like you used to and all that. It's, you know, it's a new house is wonderful. You know, just, just wonderful to have pretty soon. You know, it's just a house. Now you look at the paper Sunday. Ooh, look at that. You ain't gonna buy that stuff. You just look. They come, things come and go. I'm telling you. They come.
coming your way. Your faith in God and God's vision and purpose for your life. You're living the dream now. You're living the purpose, the plan of God now. Trust Him. Keep your dreams big because the God that lives within you is big. Extend your ropes. Prepare for what God's going to do. Drive those stakes of faith and prayer and obedience and God's word. Father, we thank you that you're the giver of every good and perfect thing. Every good and perfect gift comes down from you, the Father of life, in whom there's no variableness, there's no shadow of change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You declare that you are the Lord God and you change not. That your counsel and your purposes are immutable, meaning they are unchanging. Lord, we surrender to your purpose for our life. We surrender to your will for our life. We surrender to the dream you have for us. Lord, we trust you that you'll bring it to pass. Because, Lord, you use surrendered lives to bring to pass your desire for this world. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever would put faith and believe in him would not perish, waste away, but would have everlasting life. Your purpose, your dream, your vision for us. Be glorified in our lives, Father. And may all of your will Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, able to present you faultless before his glorious throne. Now to the only wise God, the power and dominion, the God of our visions, the God of our dreams, the God of our hopes, the God of our purpose. In Jesus' name we pray.